Explorer gives you the ability to load multiple images uh, so that you have multiple views of your object. So you can have the front, left, right, side, all those different views in ZBrush Core so you can sculpt all those different angles. Let's go ahead and open up the left palette tray and then we can come up to draw and grab that and slide it over in, into this tray just so we have it available for this exercise. Now if you look at the bottom of the draw palette we have these three buttons here that say front back, up, down, and left, right. Go ahead and click on the front back and expand it. Now let's click the floor button so we can actually see our objects highlight over here and it'll give us the options to change these. And now that this is on we have all of these options highlighted so we can select them for the front back option here. So let's go ahead and click on map one and you'll see this window that pops up. It's called the quick pick window. You can see that there's already a set of images in here that uh, are in uh, ZBrush Core by default. Now we're not going to really use any of these images. We actually want to import some of the images that we've drawn or that we want to uh, model after. So let's do that. So go ahead and, and uh, click on the texture palette up here. And then click on the import button and then you're, you'll notice your folder will open. So be sure and navigate to the right folder where your images are stored. Let's go ahead and open this first image I have selected here. This is the front image of the sculpture that I'm working on. Now click on the map one switch and you'll see that image that we just imported. Go ahead and click on the one called front. Great, now we have an image as a reference that fits into the grid behind our sculpting object. The only problem now is that our image was not a complete square so it doesn't cover the entire grid properly. So let's fix this. So you'll notice we have all kinds of buttons here to basically edit this image. Um, so for example, we have map one and map two here. Our image is in map one. Well, let's uh, click the switch button here. And you'll notice that once I do, it goes into map two. And it looks like we don't have an image in map one anymore. Um, so uh, that's kind of what it does. It kind of puts it on the front or back of that grid. And so that's just one option you have there. Uh, the next option is to actually click flip. And you'll notice the image flips here. Rotate will change the orientation of the image. Inverse is a nice feature. It kind of inverses the colors for a strong contrast. And now if you'll notice these sliders down here, these are really helpful to really um, kind of place the image in the proper location. You can kind of play with these and get them set in the right location and um, see how that changes the image size and the scale. An easy way to get back to the original image is to set scale to one and then the other sliders here to zero. Finally, we have adjust. So go ahead and click that. Now you'll notice a new window pops up. So you can see these little red uh, anchor points here. You can grab those and basically crop the image how you would like. And you can also look at these settings up here and manually input those numbers. So let's go ahead and make this a perfect square. Okay, and once we have that, we can actually uh, click OK in the bottom here. And now the image fits perfectly into the square. Just a note here, as you plan these images out beforehand, it's really a good idea to make sure that they're all squares and all the images line up perfectly. This will help you so you don't have to do any editing in ZBrush. You can do it in your programs like Illustrator or Photoshop. And then all the images will be imported perfectly and you won't have to edit them here. And now click on the image button that says Map To. And let's go ahead and import our image that says Back. And once we do that, it doesn't look like it did anything. Um, but when you rotate around to the back side of this grid, you see that it actually has a backside image. This is great, and uh, this is one of the best features for drawing and illustrating in uh, 3D here in ZBrush Core. And as you're getting things set up, you can kind of see where under the floor switch here, it has a grid size and tiles and all this. This is where you kind of you can adjust the size and you can adjust the grid so that everything fits perfectly to the size of your sculpture. Also, this snap button is very unique in the fact that it basically snaps to the back of your model. And the same thing with the left and right, front, up and down. So you'll have all those images, I mean, right up uh, snug against your model there. Okay, now one of the coolest features here. Let's go ahead and, uh, the, and click on this button called the P-Line. This is a great feature, and as you can see, Make sure this is on and hover over the model and you will see a line that connects the blue in this case as we are in the Z axis. 
And this line basically shows you the points in your model and it cor its corresponding area in the reference to the images. So practice this and see and play around with it for a bit and get try to get used to this and it'll really help you sculpt your models according to your reference images. The final step in this is to go ahead and upload the rest of the images for up and down and left and right. Now you're ready to start sculpting. Hey, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.